project name came from a song I wrote called Good Saint Nathaniel. Someone asked me what, who that character was, and the more I thought about it, I realized that like, Good Saint Nathaniel to me was like something to strive for. Like I think on our best days, maybe for even just a few seconds or minutes, we all have like saintly actions. And so for me saying like, I'm this project's Good Saint Nathaniel, I'm aspiring to have more of those like good moments where I treat my my fellow man really well uh, and less like time where it's just focused about me. Recently did a show with Nate where he did all the tunes from uh, Hide No Truth and uh, it's one of the bravest uh, pieces of art that I've ever witnessed and I think this is a totally brilliant uh, record. Good Saint Nathaniel's new album Hide No Truth is dripping with sorrow mixed with hope. It has mournful soundscapes that are brutally raw, yet speak of healing and transformation. I highly recommend this album. It is like medicine for your soul. I was writing these, these songs and they were just getting more and more personal, like more and more intense. And I, I went through a book called The Artist's Way, I think it was three years ago we did it, and realized that I needed to write a record about my faith experience. As I started writing, I just, I continued to tap, tap into more and more pain that, you know, was is still present, but was just like kind of around every corner. I looked deeper and deeper and it would just be like, oh gosh, this hurts more. It still, still affects me. Realizing that the interactions I'd had with the faith community over, over my life had the same effects of someone who'd been in an abusive relationship. Like, I didn't want to talk about faith uh, for fear of rejection, for fear of, like, like devastation. I figured if somebody knew about the elements of my life that had involved, you know, like, church, <laughs> missions, pastoring stuff, I just felt like my faith interactions and my past, it was just this big black cloud kind of hanging over me. And when I had the, the the light bulb moment where it felt like maybe this is abuse, I felt like I was able to start wrestling and fighting with it, maybe having some positive action instead of just running from my past. This could be a great album for a lot of folks who might have wounding from the church, growing up in it or being outside of it and judged by it. I think your message about grace and healing and love is good and strong and needed. But what I love about Hide No Truth is that despite that place of pain, it refuses to turn its back on that church and gives a lot of hope that it's still worth loving, which I find really refreshing and encouraging. I beat myself up over my ineptitude for years. Like, like my inability to talk about faith matters meant that I was, you know, violating those scriptures that talk about going into all the world and preaching the gospel. Um, and we just saw a guy on a soapbox and we drove down the street this afternoon. And I mean, I felt like the, the religion I grew up in said that if you weren't that guy in the soapbox, you were essentially uh, choosing that everyone you met would just be going to hell and it was your fault. And that, that guilt ate me alive. I'm a, I'm a person who wants to help people. Uh, and that who will work really hard to help his friends. And so the thought that like, I was intentionally damning people to hell um, was really intense and really conflicted and I didn't know how to talk about it. So I just buried it. Nate's lyrics are like the words, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, they can't produce life. He's singing about that life that's fallen into the ground and died. Seeing the darkness of that death with hope of resurrection. So what I absolutely love about the good St. Nathaniel record is, to me it feels like a safe place. You know, um, all of us have pain. All of us have something that we've gone through. And, you know, I think in our culture and our society, we try to fix it. We try to resolve it. We try to put a band-aid on it. And um, I love that this record doesn't have that resolve. It's, it's a safe place for us to sit and be exactly where we're at 
and accept where we're at and embrace the pain and see the beauty in the midst of that. When you're listening to High No Truth, you can you can genuinely hear a man changing and growing as a human being. You can hear Nate uh, tangibly healing emotionally through his music. This record for me is very much a therapeutic journal entry, working through my process, hoping that in some way it can help other people unlock and have permission to work through their vulnerable, painful moments in their past and realize that that doesn't have to be the defining factor in their story. It's a record that resonates, whether um, tonally, just because it's something that uh, musically I'm more attracted to, or contextually, because I can relate to some of the emotional and spiritual, and because of that, often physical uh, turmoil that it took to get this record to where Nate needed it to be. And I am proud of him for pushing through all that he has chosen to sing about in order to create something that is more than reactionary and vitriolic, and instead something that has taken pain and turned it into beauty. Man, the whole work is incredibly reflective. Um, uh, honestly, right now, I have gotten so hooked on the song Lightning. Uh, I've probably listened to it 20 times. Um, it's a, just opened up a big space for my own reflection and has provided me some solace. All that swirling, all that uh, complication was poured into a record of quiet, dark, stark folk songs that was just me and a guitar alone in a room, uh, stripping back click tracks, stripping back anything to really get in the way of the raw emotion of the songs, and then had some friends come in and add noise. So keys, guitar, we actually have some harp on there, some cicadas, some broken tape noise. There's all sorts of fun organs, double bass. Hide No Truth to me is, is really about facing personal demons, walking through spiritual abuse to kind of come out the other side, to end, end in a place that is better than where you started, uh, is more content. It's, it's the quietest thing I've ever recorded in my life. Life doesn't always have to be comfortable. It doesn't always have to be moving in a, a peaceful, good, easy direction uh, to still be moving in what feels like a, a needed direction. And that to me is a lot of uh, what, what this record's about.